And Plug Gallery was opened in early 2011 by founding director Shenyan Coder, and we're the only gallery in London that exclusively specializes in Chinese contemporary art. Shenyan's vision has always been to provide a platform for both established and contemporary Chinese artists established and emerging, excuse me, and we're an international stage here in London, and she aims to embrace all aspects of the genre. So we have kind of a mixture of painting, sculpture, photography, we want to show everything that there is to show. I'm very happy to be holding this current exhibition by artist Han Bing. And he's a widely exhibited Beijing-based multidisciplinary artist, and this is his very first London solo show. And his repertoire includes photography, sculpture, performance, installation, and even painting, so he's got a very broad range. And without further ado, I'll uh, introduce you to our gallery manager, Dagmar Carvalho Lavasoli. Um, she's going to give a 10 minute introduction to both the artist and this exhibition, which is called Reverse Dreamscapes. And Dagmar is a contemporary Chinese art specialist. She spent years with both in China, with both Han Bing and the other artists, working to help them establish their careers, doing lots of other work with them. So um, feel free to approach either one of us later with any questions you might have, and I'll uh, pass on to her. So thank you. Welcome to Paul Gallery. Is my voice okay? Is it good to go? I am Dagmar and I'd like to give you a brief introduction um, to this artist's handling and to the main theme of this exhibition. As such, as I said, this is a solo exhibition by Chinese contemporary artist Han Bing. <coughs> and uh, Han Bing was born in a small village in rural China, in Jiangsu province, in 1974. And is currently based in Beijing, where he graduated from the Central Academy of Fine Arts. And the fact that he was raised in a small, impoverished village in China really played a crucial role in shaping his own belt and shang. So his vision of the world and the way he relates himself to the globalization of China. So his work is mostly centered around the critical theme of modernization in China today and delves into the bifurcated reality of Chinese economic development. And I say bifurcated reality because on the one hand, Chinese economic development obviously brings a, a lot of wealth, progress and happiness to certain individuals. But on the other hand, it also generates an increase in consumerism, materialism and discrepancy between rich and poor. And so Han Bing is interested in exploring all these issues and uh, in uh, expressing his own opinion through his artistic language. So this exhibition uh, features a series of artworks, part of this photographic conceptual series called Urban Amber. As you can see, there are trees or skyscrapers, buildings reflected in water. So what the artist did, he took the picture of the reflection of the environment in lakes and, uh, and rivers in Beijing. And while at first these images look quite uh, beautiful and charming, our initial perception is subsequently challenged once we realize that actually all these images are embraced by, uh, by very dirty rivers. So something that initially seems to be uh, quite stunning turns out to be a little bit disgusting because it's pollution and so it's uh, industrial waste and any sort of rubbish. And um, so through these photographs, Han Bing is really, um, in a certain way, is really inviting us to reflect uh, upon our initial perception of beauty and to contemplate the true cost of our materialistic desires. And it's also interesting uh, to note the technique uh, adopted by Han Bing, so the fact that after he's taken a picture, he flips it over, so that the land and the sky are reversed, and this conveys a further sense of ambiguity within his works. And these images have got this uh, sort of impressionist-like texture, and they're both ethereal and uh, atmospheric, as if they're exuding the beauty of a mirage. Like, for example, the green one over there is quite representative of this sense of like an illusion almost. Uh, but at the same time, they're also quite dense and heavy, as if they're bearing the detritus of time, like, for instance, this one here. And um, so, as previously mentioned, uh, one reason that makes Hamlet's work really unique is the fact that he deals with these relevant social matters, in this case, environmental issues, by adopting this quite uh, outstanding perspective of beauty and human desire. And human desire can be very strong, can be very passionate, but at the same time, it can also be quite, um, quite frightening and destructive. So uh, this uh, conceptual series is really encapsulating uh, this polarity of human desire. 
as here the artist is merging the marvelous threat of urbanization with the destruction of the environment. So although these photographs are beautifully, uh, beautifully rendered, they're actually making quite a statement as they're really bringing the attention to the consequences of uncontrolled human desire for consumption. So in this sense, the human desire is portrayed both in a charming yet destructive way. And another reason that makes his work uh, quite distinctive is, as mentioned, the fact that they're imbued with multiple layers of references. And one reference is certainly uh, Western Impressionism. So, for example, if you look at that work, which is quite hidden behind uh, all of you over there, the tower, this one really recalls the painting of French uh, painter Monet. In particular, way it makes me think, but this is just my own uh, my own opinion. It makes me think of the Cathedral of Rouen when Monet was painting the same subject over and over again during the same day, morning, afternoon, and evening, and he was trying to catch the variety of lights, colors, and shades. And here, Han Bin is, is not taking the same picture over and over again, but in one single shot, he's really able to grasp this diversity and this variety of colors and hints and, um, and shades presenting in nature. So he's really portraying nature and, and nature in a contaminated way, so contaminated by pollution. But um, if we look at this other painting, and sorry, photograph over there, the other vertical piece here, this one is also reminiscent of other Western artists, in particular way of Van Gogh and Moon. In fact, if you look at the upper part of these curves, they, they really recall the brushstroke of Van Gogh and Moon, although uh, Van Gogh and Moon were much more um, kind of stronger brushstrokes and with more intensity of vigor. Here, obviously, due to the fact that we're dealing with real water, there is this very good sense of fluidity and the curves are much smoother. Um, but Hamid's work is not only recalling the Western Impressionism, it's also and actually mostly rooted within the ancient Chinese philosophy of Taoism, according to which man and nature are in a perfect union, a perfect fusion. So according to Taoism, um, man is not trying to prevail nature, he's not trying to dominate it, but is rather part of nature and is following the course of events in a very harmonious way. And in this course of events, there are lots of different uh, elements that are constantly interacting. So, for example, day and night, uh, emptiness and fullness, lightness and heaviness, and so on and so forth. And also in Hamlin's work, we find the balance between these elements. So, if again we look at this green painting over that green photograph, we can see quite a good balance between the upper part of the composition and the lower part in the sense that the upper part is characterized by emptiness and by air, while the lower part is water and uh, is fullness with the building. So there is also a relationship between something that is dynamic, water, and something that is uh, static, the building. And we could find many more connections related to, um, to Taoist philosophy in all these works. And uh, um, Hamming's work is also recalling the traditional Chinese landscape painting called the Shan Shui, that literally means Shan is mountain and Shui is water. And the Shan Shui, the word, is beautiful um, hand scroll, most of the time horizontal, but it could also be vertical. They were portraying uh, the beauty of nature. And in portraying this, in this landscape, there were a lot of different natural elements, and one of these elements was the, was the human, human presence. But the human being was not represented any bigger of rocks or pagodas or trees. He was really having the same, the same size, pretty much. And this was a way to highlight the fact that, as already said, man was not uh, more important than the rest of nature. It's really part of it. And this is quite different to the Western conception, in which we usually find the human presence uh, depicted in quite bigger proportion as a way to highlight the importance of man. And also in Han Bin we can find in some of these photographs some very tiny human beings, like for example here, they're really, really tiny, you might not even notice them, but in some other photographs you can find this very uh, small presence of, of human beings. And this is again to highlight the fact that this is just part of nature, so they're really small as every, every other natural element. And um, also regarding the traditional Chinese landscape painting, um, they were not depicting nature in an objective way, but they were rather portraying nature in quite a subjective way. So they were really uh, the projection of the artist's own inner world within the beauty of nature. 
And in this sense, uh, the Shan Shui were also called the images of the mind, because it's exactly something that was coming from inside the artist rather than outside. And for this reason, they were permeated with uh, quite a strong sense of spirituality. And also in this case, we can find that um, Han Bing is really, through his works, is reflecting his own spirituality and his own desire uh, to have a union between man, man and nature. And um, so, just to briefly conclude this uh, introduction, um, I'd like to highlight the fact that Han Bing's work is quite socially charged. And uh, although he's got Chinese reality as a starting point, he's actually extending to a much wider scope because obviously environmental issues is something that concerns our whole entire planet, certainly not only related to China but to all countries. And uh, in this sense, his work is really bridging the East <coughs> and the West. And the, bridging the East and the West is not only in terms of content, so in terms of environmental issues, but it's also in terms of forms. Because, as we've seen, he really recalls both Western tradition and Eastern tradition. So what he does, he merges and he reinterprets all the past traditions according to his own uh, contemporary sensibility. And what he creates are works which are characterized by quite a modern and uh, an avant-garde feeling. And so for these works, it's really, um, it's really highlighting the lack of respect for our planet, but at the same time, He's really uh, giving us a very positive and beautiful message because he's inviting us and he's suggesting a return to an old, uh, an ancient and pure, uh, really original fusion between man and nature. And in doing so, he, he employs his own artistic language, which is, in my opinion, as a creator, is quite, um, is quite poetic and, and delicate. Yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Fairly recent. Uh, this one they were taken in different periods, so they actually started in 2005, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the last is 2012. Or, yeah. yeah, so it's been seven years of work. So the reason why years. I asked is, so what do you think there's, all these locations are going to look like? These they were in, all shot in, shot in Beijing. In 20 years' time. Yes. Well, yeah. are, are they going to look the same in 20 years' time? Or? <laughs> Yeah, because that's another, that's another message, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, this work, as I said, they're included with multiple days of references, but they obviously have a lot of different meanings, so, you know, on a personal level, I think there's looks, some... It looks, to be a, looks to be a lot of blue sky in these, although it's not blue sky, but it's water. But, yeah. you know, that's, that's why I asked what it's going to look like in 20 years' time. Yeah, maybe it's actually now, maybe 20 years is much worse, or maybe hopefully it will be much better. Yeah, that's also what he's going to talk about. Remember, he's taking this long. Well, it can all, it all, all be photoshopped, yeah. No, some of the but he has not been yeah, no, this is an interesting question about Photoshop because actually almost everyone asks us if it is a Photoshop, but they're not. And actually I'll tell you something which is quite funny. A few days ago I was walking around the river and I decided to take my own little picture 
and well, obviously they work very well, otherwise they would be same classes, but at the same time it's not a super difficult process if you have some really strong I was just being provocative, that's all the same thing. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> so just kind of maybe use it as a platform for environmentalism? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking mean, it's really working a lot on, on ecological things, it does a lot of performances, it's very much involved in this sort of social issues, so for him, He's, he's really a guy that really believes about what he says, very genuine, because they said he was raised in a very impoverished uh, village in rural China. So he really saw the deep how the course of his years China has been changing so fast. He was used to a dream from these rivers, to drink water and to and have a sweet, and now he's like, horrified to look that everything is completely spoiled and dirty. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Capture the hutongs, the, the courtyard, which is sometimes yeah. demolish to uh, express the progress. Yeah. The well, actually, uh, we had another artist that was here in January, and he's called Su Yong, that is a specialist about the hutong. He started to take a lot of pictures in uh, 1989, and, uh, and he's really, really trying to protect and to preserve the hutong. But in regard to Han being as far as I know, he hasn't really taken a release about the Hutong, but more about uh, these dirty rivers 